Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, morning. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting only a few seconds uh, that everyone uh, is joining the session. So. So just in time, eight o'clock, um, welcome Exo World um, and good morning um, and nice to hear, have you here on board um, to the webinar. Um, my name is Pina, um, I'm part of the application team and uh, my support for today is uh, Michael. He's next to me, um, also in home office and um, during the session and during the webinar, he will answer your questions. But maybe um, we have also on the end of the session, we have 20 minutes, around about 15, 20 minutes uh, to answer all the questions. Um, but before also important note, um, we will record this webinar um, and we will post it later on also on YouTube. If you miss something um, and you would like to see it once again, um, it's not a problem, um, you will see it later on. Um, today, um, during our session, we will uh, show um, a free element bridge um, with the newest Plovdiv release. Um, and um, I will show all the features, um, basic features for beginners, um, but also on top some topics, uh, which one are in expert mode and uh, what you have to take care about it. Um, also, the next days, uh, we will show uh, different um, webinars with different topics um, on our web page. You can see um, here's the list what we will show and also the time, um, which topics and um, yeah, stay tuned. Um, okay, for today we have the free element bridge, but I'd like to start at first with the normal dental DB. Um, with the project, um, where we start with our project, we can set up our client, for an example, the patient name. And over here, we can uh, sign in the technician. In our job definition, in the middle, uh, we can select which type of um, framework we would like to design. For an example, we can choose an anatomic crown with the material, from our list and also the option and parameters. A lot of parameters are shown over here, but later on during the design, I will also um, explain the advanced parameters with the cement gap and the spacer and um, the margin and so on. Important is here, um, material um, um, configuration uh, of the conoxide is minimum thickness of 0.6 and the cement gap is 0 0.08. If I change one of these values, um, they will definitely uh, shown in a another color, in red, for an example. And if I save this case, um, this value will be saved for this work type and also for my dentist, for my name of the client, yeah? And uh, will used all the time if I'd like to use this one. Here, if I'm choosing, for an example, zirconoxide and another pontic or copying, and here, for an example, copying over here. A really nice feature um, to copy and also to um, yeah use the same work type on another tooth is once that you can use control and shift, but also possible is to track and drop one of this tooth to another uh, tooth in the adjacent um, jaw, for an example. Also important to know, it's um, if you have selected a wrong type, you can also use an um, empty one and drag it to this one to delete it. You don't have to open the menu again to clear it. Also only possible to track and drop in any other position, you can track one of these two and you can copy, for an example, uh, this one to another one. It's really easy. So, but for today, 
we don't save this project, we have the free element bridge, which one we would like to design. I'm um, loading one of my demo cases. So, and in this demo case, you can see um, the whole um, upper jaw is defined as an um, antagonist. It's not mandatory to do this, but we have done it. Um, it looks a little bit nicer. Um, it's also possible only to mark one or two tooths uh, as an antagonist. Um, over here in the lower jaw, we have one full anatomic crown, one pontic, which one is reduced, and one copying. Uh, later on, we will uh, change uh, here, uh, not reduced pontic, we will do a uh, vestibular um, shrinkage. So, and also over here, we have defined adjacent tooths. And as an, a scan mode, um, we have defined um, the articulator system FAG, um, the quick master articulator. That's one of the newest ones. Um, but anyway, you can uh, work with any um, articulator system in our list. As you can see, we have a lot of articulators included. Um, here also, um, which one is shown is the digital impression scan. If you have a um, digital impression scan, it's also possible to use. Um, and when we start a design, uh, we can start the articulator system, um, and then we have to re-articulate um, or to place the, the jaws into the articulator system. But this one I will show you. So um, that's it. We can start um, with the design. So, okay, the scans are loaded um, and I will give you a short um, introduction about our interface. Um, on top, um, we have here our show and hide box where we can show and hide also um, different uh, meshes. Um, once we can click here um, to activate and deactivate, we can use the slider to change the transparency. But also on the keyboard, um, we have some shortcuts um, to hide and show um, the, the meshes. Over here is our wizard mode. Um, in the wizard, uh, we that's a that's a normal workflow. Which one we can follow? Um, the workflow um, is working step by step, and we can um, start with the articulator system. And if it's done, we can continue. Here on the right side, on my right side, we have um, the save button. If you would like to save the case, uh, we have expert mode. Um, this one we'll do later on. Uh, we have tools with different um, measurement tools or um, options, which one we can activate and use during the design. Show distance uh, will be shown later on. It's the distance um, to the adjacent teeths and to the antagonist and true smile is activated. Um, texture and color, um, if it's an intral scan, we can also show uh, the texture scan. And the cut view function is um, to have a cut view um, during the design to check, okay, how is the fitting and so on. Uh, we have here some uh, small arrows to show different directions of the scan, um, but also we can normally rotate our models. So let's start. Um, so over here we will use the normal virtual articulator. The second option is to load Joe motion um, files. Uh, for an example, we can use uh, Cypris, Mojo and Frostrom. So over here um, the quick master is automatically loaded. Um, if you like to switch in between uh, you have your fully list of articulator systems over here, and you can choose another one. Um, also possible to load this uh, XML file from the GeoMotion um, devices, um, but in this case, we don't have this. Uh, we are using at first um, to re-articulate uh, models virtually. So over here, what we can do, um, we have 
different show and hide um, options to show the articulator system and also the occlusal plane, for an example to see the position of the jaws. Uh, when we grab the, the jaws, we can move them in totally, uh, completely with the control. You can see the small arrows and then we can change the position of our jaws. Uh, but this is freehand. Uh, we don't know if it's really correct. Another option is to uh, use the automatically uh, positioning uh, where we have to place three points on the jaw for an example, over here, the incisal point we have to mark, and then on the left and the right molar position. So I will use, for example, over here this point, and with the alignment and with the occlusal plane, we can see the position. And if we'd like to change right now a little bit the position, that's okay, we can do it in freehand. So, okay, if this one is done, we can click OK and we can show the articulator. So, over here we have also another option to uh, choose um, which tooth influenced the articulator movement. Um, also, if um, one tooth, for an example, will be extracted um, later on, but it's still over here. We can mark this one uh, or yeah, activate this one that it will not use for the, um, for the movement. Here in our um, drop-down menu, we have the different um, movements. Um, as you can see, the movements are a little bit reduced or less. You have less um, adjustments in this quick master um, articulator. Um, it's a simple one. You also can uh, change the um, condyle angle and also you can open the bite, for example, over here if you like to use it. So, and then we will do the movement. The software is um, saving this um, movement and during the design we can always um, use and check um, how is the yeah, occlusal um, during our design. So it's done. And automatically here um, is a small window uh, where we can see our movements. And if I'd like to check one, I can use this drag and drop slider uh, to see um, how it's going. Okay. So, okay, the articulator is done, so we continue. Um, the next wizard step is the margin line detection. So we will start with tooth number 44, and with this small lumen, um, with this lumen, you can see um, where, where we have our prep margin line. So when we click once, um, you see the first result. Um, and with the correct and uh, draw margin option, you can check um, the position. You can add some more points in between. Um, and here you can see if the margin line is really like you like to have this one. So if it's done, we can continue. So in the wizard, we will see the next one for six. We have to do the same, only one click on the margin line and detection um, is really, really nice. And with the correct and draw option, we can check one more time if it's okay. If it's fine, we can continue. The software is calculating um, the next step, uh, the crown bottom. Uh, we have some um, values, um, pre-values, uh, which one are defined. Uh, for an example, we have no cement gap. Uh, the gap uh, is the golden part over here. It's 0 0.08. Um, if we like to add another zone, for an example, if we have small thin dice, we can also add another zone by painting on top of the crown. 
This is with add another zone. Um, with this green arrows on top um, of the die, you can see the insertion direction. I have chosen um, beforehand in the DB, it's a five axis or a printing process. Um, if we choose this one, um, the software is checking uh, automatically the insertion direction for each um, die. Um, if you have a huge bridge uh, with different elements, also the software will checking uh, the insertion direction for each die separately. Uh, for this, uh, we always recommend um, to check the insertion direction for the whole bridge. Um, this one is always possible if you click uh, in the background with your right mouse and you set insertion direction. You can choose, for an example, tooth number 44, also 46 um, included. And if you activate also all dice, you can see the insertion direction for the whole framework. Uh, you can also uh, choose unique insertion direction. That's also another possibility to do. Um, if you have a huge bridge, uh, we always recommend to check the insertion direction for the whole bridge. Otherwise, um, it's not possible to, uh, to place it later on in the mouth. So, but in this case, it's a two element bridge or three element bridge with two dice. Um, that's absolutely okay to do it like this. Um, so, then what we have uh, with the next tab, the border regions. Um, the border is this green border region over here, also with the cut view. If I'm scrolling like this, this is my uh, border region. Um, these presets um, are also depending from the material. Um, if you have, for example, cobalt chrome, uh, non-pressure um, and or um, metal, uh, you have a smaller value as uh, as you use uh, zircon oxide, for example. If you reduce the values um, and you will mill, for example, zircon oxide, maybe you will have some chipping problems during the milling. So, um, and these presets um, normally are really safe. So, with the undercuts, um, this one I will um, deactivate again. With the undercuts, you have different uh, options. Um, over here, this green zone, as you can see, it's free of cement. Here we have a perfect fitting of the crown later on. If there is a small undercut, um, this arrow on top of the die will be shown in, in pink. And also you will have a small marking um, over here on the margin. Um, we protect the zone near margin line um, close to 0 0.1. Um, that means we will really have a fitting on the margin. If you have, for example, a PMMA um, or a um, provisional, you can also set it to zero and the software will block out um, this region uh, to the margin line, to zero. Yeah. Um, for the final frame, it's not recommended, um, but for, uh, for an example, PMMA for provisionals, we can also block out to zero. The milling diameter, um, the tool compensation um, is depending on the smallest tool, which one, I, which one you use during the, the milling process. Um, normally, it's one millimeter, and we recommend to use uh, 1.2 uh, as a tool compensation that also this region, if you have small dice, will be definitely milled. If you choose zero, uh, 0 0.9, for an example, or only one millimeter, maybe you will have here a little rest of material inside of the crown and the fitting will not be perfect. And um, over here, it's always um, 1.2 from default. But this one depends also on the milling machine and how you produce. If you print, also you can deactivate it. So the crown bottom step is done, so we can continue. Okay, uh, with this red zone, you can see the minimum thickness. Over here, I can also show and hide it. Um, the next wizard um, is showing the copy to function. Um, so we will do a combination. We will copy a mirror one tooth 
and the rest uh, we will use uh, two of these uh, we will use with the normal um, tooth library. So over here I can copy or mirror um, the molar tooth only by clicking and then I can place it over here. So true smile is activated by default. So here I can grab this tooth and also can move it with shift. I can scale it directly. And with here, with these markings on top, I can see the um, contact to the antagonist. So over here, I can also rotate um, by holding um, shift. If I like to scale only in one direction, um, it's also possible to do. If I'm holding shift and control, I can scale in one direction. So, but we will do the placement also later on. At first, we uh, continue um, with loading the normal tooth library. So, in this step, I will hide also the antagonist. Here you can see the, the premolars are loaded. Um, so, if I'm choosing um, or if I have chosen the normal tooth library and I'm not happy with the design or with the shape of the tooth, uh, once you can do uh, also with the right click in the background, load custom model teeth. Um, and also brand new is um, here we have new tooth libraries in the Ploftiff release. Um, automatically loaded is the generic library, but here in the drop down menu, you can see we have the Exofan library, which one has a really nice shape. Um, and also, for an example, we have the Psaris. It's also um, a nice library um, and also the Psaris Edgy. Um, this is, um, these are the new uh, libraries which one are available. Um, if I like to choose um, this one, I can click OK and the software will change the shape or change the library. Ah, OK. Uh, so I have also um, loaded the molar. I had to deactivate this one, but OK, uh, we will use this one. No problem. So also one option, which one is important to know um, if I have chosen, for an example, um, the normal um, libraries um, and the, um, the tooth is not fitting um, here inside of for this Pontic, I can also activate only one by clicking with the right mouse on top of the tooth and load only for an example this premolar and for an example I can choose a molar tooth or another one if the shape is not fitting or I have to change the shape um, then it's always possible by clicking directly on the tooth um, and to load another one so okay um, as you can see we have a little bit too much contact um, to the antagonist. So that means here also show in um, insertion. We can check also the adjacent teeths. Um, and here we have to do the positioning. So that means here I will reduce the height of my library. So at first, without antagonist, and if I'd like to see also the antagonist, I can show the antagonist and check how it looks like. It's easy by uh, clicking on A on the keyboard um, and to show and to hide. So, okay. Okay, so um, if the positioning is done, we can continue with next. The software will adapt automatically the um, tooth to the margin line.
And in the next uh, wizard step, we have different options. Uh, once is the free forming um, to add and remove material. Also the smoothing uh, is available and different tool types. Um, but this one I will show later on when we have adapted the frame. Um, the second tab is anatomic. Uh, here we can grab some casps to change um, the height, for an example, or we can grab parts um, to change the shape a little bit. Also, the entire tooth is uh, available. If you see, okay, maybe there is something which one is not correct, um, then you can grab also the entire tooth and um, change it. So, over here, adapt step. Um, what we have is um, here on the bottom side is cut all intersections. Um, that means um, the software will at automatically adapt the approximately contact, the pontic, and also the occlusal part um, in uh, dynamic movement. But I will explain every single uh, topic separately because we have here some uh, good. Um, possibilities to do. Uh, Pontic means we can adapt in minus or plus. That's important to know. Um, so we have the occlusal part, um, we have the cut intersection, and also the dynamic movement is activated. That means during my adaptation of the occlusal part, the software will do the movement from the articulator system and will adapt. Um, my uh, framework. Uh, here we have a small um, distance. Um, here that's also uh, possible to change. You can set it to minus or to plus. Um, if you like to, for an example, um, you have a full anatomic second frame and you would like to uh, place some um, glass on top, you can uh, change this value. So over here, also possible to do is exclude selected parts. If you like to exclude parts uh, where you like to have more contact, you can select all, uh, deselect, or you can select a special region. Yeah. So here we will cut the intersections. And approximately, um, so over here, if we have the contact points, as you can see from the bottom side, Over here is the same. We have a small contact, but on top we have some uh, separate options. Also the disc cutter is shown over here. Um, if you like to really to control um, without um, the jaw scan, if you like to control your contact point, you have this disc cutter function. And this, this cutter will always import it in the insertion direction. So over here, you can see if I'm using the disc cutter and I'm controlling this one, um, I can um, have a really nice uh, contact point to my um, adjacent tooths. That's one option um, to use. And also, if it's a difficult situation, we have here block out neighbor collision. It's also in the insertion direction that the software will uh, block out um, directly the adjacent tooths. So we will also use the cut all intersection function over here. So attachments uh, is over here. That's the last step, uh, but in this case, we don't use it. It's only um, to see uh, this always possible in the free form step. We can place some attachments or we can also subtract parts from the frame. So, but we go back to the freeform step or freeform tab. Here in the smoothing part, we can uh, add material, we can remove material, and smoothing is the same. We can smooth the frame, um, and also with the shift, uh, we can use it in a fast way. Here for the pontic, for an example, we also can shape a little bit the basal part of the, the pontic. If I'm um, unhappy with the, um, with the visualization of the true smile, I can always deactivate over here the true smile and I can use the normal freeforming. So over here with the tool tips uh, or with the tools, I can also add and remove 
material and do some nice free forming on the frame. So. Okay, if I'm done, so we continue. So over here, I have chosen a full anatomic crown. Um, and here, um, for an example, for the pontic, I'd like to choose um, that it's only um, shrinked vestibular. Um, and here I have the depth of the, the shrinkage of the material, which one we have to apply later on. And with this option, um, exclude selected parts. I can mark, for an example, I will hide this tooth. I will mark over here. So, okay. Okay, so over here, um, I think it's done. So we can continue. The software will shrink um, my frame. Um, as you can see over here, um, this is not perfect. So that means here I can use the smoothing tool and smooth here the frame. Also the edges, um, if they are not perfectly, um, I can go over um, and smooth it. Um, so here we don't have to do anything else. Um, it's done, so that means we can continue. And we are in one of the last steps in the connector step. Um, the connectors um, are shown over here in the um, yellow color. Um, we have the minimum area is nine millimeter. Um, here in for zircon oxide it's a little bit more. We have different shapes which one we can use for an example. Uh, triangle shape and if I'm applying uh, the cross section um, the software will apply this one. So here if I'm taking or grabbing my, my connector I can also change the position in totally. We have another tool tip um, over here. If I'm grabbing um, my connector and I'm holding the shift key, I can bend my, um, my connector. And here um, you can see this um, yellow points. That's the center of my, um, con of my connector. If I'm holding the control key, I can also um, grab one side of my connector and change the position. Yeah, we have here different option in the normal positioning step. But on top also, we have here in free form more freedom uh, to change the shape of the connector. As you can see, we have a lot of control points and also the visualization of my um, connector is shown. If I'm um, getting less than my minimum area or um, dimension, then the software will show it in numbers and also with the color in the in the purple color and the pink color um, to see, okay, it's a little bit too thin for an example. Yeah. And here we have all the freedom to uh, change um, the shape and um, to freeform our connectors. That's it. Um, so we will continue. This one was shown in red because it's a little bit less under the minimum area, but it's okay for this. So, um, so I have done um, the merge and save uh, step. Um, the software is um, saving um, one STL file um, in um, 3D optimization. It's SLM. Um, optimized, um, but it's also possible to mill, for an example. So here um, I can select I'm done, proceed to production. Um, that means uh, I can also start directly my, um, my CAM software. 
Here, freeform restoration, it's possible to use expert mode, it's possible to use and design model. So at first, in the freeform, I have one option, um, or I will show this one without the antagonist. So um, as I told you before, um, in the um, we have saved there a file. In the free form, if I'm using the smooth tool, it's one STL file. So that means if I'm going over this frame, it's really nice to smooth it. It's one element. So over here, so I will really uh, save it, correct? So then um, also important to know if I have forgot to do something or something is wrong. Um, we have different options. Over here in the bottom part in this um, toolbar, we have only some small functions or small things. Um, we uh, can do a delete um, reconstruction. That means uh, we can uh, delete this merged bridge but it's not that we delete uh, the whole frame or the whole design. It's only the merged parts, which one we delete, it's important to know. The software is opening uh, the design again. And here you have all possibilities. You can uh, open every single step, which one we have done before uh, for the whole project. If I'm um, using uh, one of these buttons, the whole project will be activated. Um, also the same, if I'm clicking on the background with my, my right mouse, I have also all possibilities over here in my, my list. And the difference, if I'm clicking directly on one of the tooth, uh, you can see only this tooth is activated. And for an example, I have checked something was wrong. Uh, here, I have the possibility to correct the margin line, for an example, or I can open the reduce tooth part, free form, everything is over here. And uh, I can always uh, change everything what I have done before. So, but I will save it again and I will show you another option. So, the frame is merged. So, and over here, if I have merged my file and um, during the design, I've done the design, it's maybe a huge bridge. I realize, okay, uh, if I'm using a whole framework, it will not fit later on. So this one I will show. Um, so if I'm realizing, okay, if I have five or six dice and uh, if I'm using one uh, whole frame, it will not fit in, in totally. Uh, I can always split my bridge at the end of the design. It's merged. And here, if I'm clicking um, directly in the background or on the frame, you can see split bridge. So here in our menu, we have different um, possibilities to use. Um, and here we can choose, for an example, a bone shape of 1.8 millimeter. That's the size. That's definitely millable with uh, the one millimeter tool. And you can see also, uh, also smaller ones. Um, and also we have different uh, gap sizes, yeah, um, that we have a little bit more space for the cement or for the clue uh, and less. So over here, you can always positioning this um, split, um, a bridge splitter, yeah, you can set from view, you can set um, select the tooth in search direction. Yeah. Um, so, and if I'm rotating this, for an example, yeah, you can apply, and the software will split um, the bridge, and then you will have two pieces. Over here is one. And the second part, yeah. So we have uh, some more options. Um, okay, if I'm realizing also maybe later on um, something was wrong um, with the bite, um, also with the die, maybe uh, we have to uh, reprep 
um, something or we have to change the positioning of the antagonist. Um, what we have is over here with the tools, we have an option to add or remove mesh. Um, I have right now only a pre-op scan available, but as you can see in our list, you can, um, for an example, extra jaw scan you can um, import if you have another jaw scan. Um, you can also uh, import extra multi-die scan, for an example, if you have a, uh, only a scan uh, from a die or face scan, you can also import gingiva mask and um, visualization mesh. We have all possibilities over here. In my case, I will import um, the pre-op scan, I will load my case, and over here you can see test uh, Z2. The software is importing, yes, um, is importing this scan. It's in the same position. Um, I will move it a little bit. No. No, it's not. Ah, no, it's not possible, it's the same. Ah, okay, but here, um, anyway, um, what you can do is um, move freely. No. Ah, here, over here. So, okay, I have moved it to another position. So, and here with the align measure step, I can mark different points on my meshes and we recommend to use points which one are um, away from each other so and if I'm clicking over here and here preform alignment I can align every um, best fit matching also um, I, I can align or import any type of mesh um, and change uh, what I have done before if I have a new byte um, if I have a new C2 or an old C2, which one I had not before, I can import at any time with add and remove mesh any type of STL file or also an ST, um, face scan, for an example. Okay, this is done. Okay, and as you can see right now, I have also the pre-op scan included uh, and can show and hide also the pre-op scan. So, and here I will go back to the Reset mode, that's done. So, and I think, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm done and I keep it open. Maybe there are some questions. I will open my panel and maybe uh, Michael will join and um, hopefully we'll have some questions. Hi, again. Hey. Yes, uh, thank you, Pina. It was amazing and <laughs> they had so common question on what is uh, the difference between virtual articulators actually and is there any differences in algorithm of working of virtual of different types of virtual articulators okay um yeah definitely we have different articulator systems um here included um, if I'm opening also this menu, um, so let me open this one. Ah, no, sorry, that was wrong. So I will go back to the expert mode um, and I will open the articulator system again. Um, This one takes a little bit of time. So the articulator systems are here included. Uh, that means every um, every single articulator is the same as you has in your have you in your laboratory. Um, as for an example, the type A is the Artex articulator, um, and here you can change all the values uh, which one are you use in your laboratory. Um, it's a copy one to one um, to uh, your real one. Yeah, and um, if you are using, for an example, Type A or um, SIM or the Quick Master or another one, um, you can do um, or the Prota, for an example. They are all here included, um, and you can use them as you are know it. 
So, okay. Any other question about the articulator system maybe? So, and uh, does it mean that the mathematics background for different articulators is as well different, yes, different, depending yes, on the model? Yes, yes, yes depending, depending on the model. Depending on the yes. movement and so far. Yes. yes, it's the same. We have different types and they have different, um, yeah, they are, they, they are different. Uh, you have sometimes uh, more movements. Uh, you have more options um, over here sometimes, yeah, and that's the same as in real, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question, uh, mm -hmm. could you show how to add extra jaw scan and how to align this extra jaw scan? Okay, um, no problem, but it's only like a, like a fake uh, extra jaw scan, okay? I will import the same as I al already have. Um, but here on tools, um, add and remove mesh, I can um, select extra jaw scan. So I will load my jaw scan uh, one more time. It's the lower jaw. Um, so, okay. So, and if I'm going back, So to my wizard mode, um, you can see it's um, only the jaw scan without the dice. Um, but here um, the software is automatically showing this uh, wizard step, uh, the scan alignment step. So that means important is here that you rotate your models in the same direction. It's not or it's not so easy for the software. It maybe can fail if you have the position like this or like this, they have to be in the same direction roundabout. And then by clicking on one point, which one you can see on both scans, that's important, the software is starting to matching uh, these two scans. And directly you can see the results, they are absolutely green and it's a really good matching. So, and important to know is also, if you continue, what you have is here, we can merge the scan data. That means the software will merge both together. Um, but for example, if you have a separate die, which one you import, which you would like to replace, then the software will replace this scan. Yeah, that's one option. Yeah, uh, that's important to know. Uh, you can choose if you like to uh, completely replace or also to merge the scan. I hope so. That's it. Um, for the add and remove uh, mesh uh, step. Something else, Michael? <laughs> oh, he's gone, or? Thank ah, you. Uh, yeah. I have, I have uh, some more questions. For example, how to add uh, digital Facebook records in virtual articulator? Ah, okay. Um, no, what we have is um, in the virtual articulator, not real. Uh, what we have is the same over here with add and remove mesh. Uh, oh, I don't sorry, sorry, Pina, sorry. No. It, it, it's about how to add like Joe motion data ah, to adjust okay. virtual articulator. You can show it, but maybe we don't have that data set for it. But um, so and they have yeah, a new we, option in Plovdiv for it. Yes, um, I will only show it, uh, but um, sorry for that. We don't have this um, this XML file. But anyway, um, important is that you have this information from your device, from the measurement device. Um, here, for an example, um, you can load the digital uh, Facebook articulator settings. Yeah, um, but really important to know once you have to have this device. Uh, where you do the measurement before. Um, this device is um, automatically, um, yeah, have an XML file, data file uh, with all the informations. And important is that you have on, on your model or on your um, um, dongle, this module. Uh, it's a show motion module activated. And then here you can load 
yes, I accept this one. <laughs> so, and then you can load this Joe um, uh, motion uh, from Cepress, for an example, or another one. It's an XML file. And then you have to select this uh, file. And the software is automatically importing, or this one I can't, is importing all the information which one we have collected before with the devices. Uh, for an example, we have a special. Um, movement for um, lateral rotation or we have um, the values for um, protrusion or so on this information will be loaded and automatically will be changed over here that means i have really the information from the device uh, and then i can use this um, as uh, my movement uh, that's important to know yeah i hope this one Yes, I've thank you very question. much. You're welcome. So we have uh, we have um, uh, some more questions. Uh, maybe I answer it, uh, these questions later on because uh, our time is out. Yeah, we have five minutes to go. You, we, if ah, you have okay. some. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, we can answer. And One there second. is no webinar. There is no webinar behind us. It's okay. We can uh, stay <laughs> a little bit longer. For example, is makes makes this difference if you uh, work on full arch or half arch in articulator. No, the movement is uh, is the same. That's the same. Important is really uh, if you have an intral scan um, or or if you have a scan uh, with. Uh, full arch and um, a lot of dice um, that you really have the real position. Um, if the uh, models are not well positioned in the articulator system, then it doesn't work correctly. Um, that's the normal um, situation. That's important to know. Yeah, but okay. um, the movement is the same uh, if you have half arch or full arch. You don't have to scan the whole arch. Okay, thank you. And uh, what to do uh, if we have some intersections or gap between JAWS and virtual articulator? Okay. Um, if you start um, the articulator, for an example, the software is checking intersections. Um, this one will be done automatically. And is um, if you have... Um, small uh, intersections, um, you will see it over here. It's 0 0.004, it's nothing, yeah? So, um, and also if you, that's really important to know, if you start the articulator and you have a gap in between, the software will show you directly a message, there is a gap. And if you would like to use this gap, for an example, you would like to have this, or if you bring them together, this jaws, that's your option. Yeah, um, the software will give you uh, the distance and information about the distance, and also if you have intersections. Um, for an example, also um, um, in the articulator system, you have the possibility to open the byte. But uh, another option is. Um, if you have opened the scans and you click directly on the antagonist scan with right mouse, you can correct the antagonist scan. Yes, I will clear the articulator results, that's correct. And over here, um, you have the possibility to correct the antagonist. Uh, for an example, you can do it in move freely, but it's uh, you don't have any reference, that's not really good to do. But here, you can um, open the byte only in set direction. Also possible is to do it in minus, for an example. Yeah. Um, and then you have an intersection also. Yeah. You can see um, if I'm moving over this um, show distance. Oh. If I'm moving it down, further down, and also I will um, show the contacts. Healthy teeth or included, you can see um, how much contact you have on your teeth. Yeah, these are some options on top. Um, but normally, um, if you work with the um, articulator system, um, you can um, open the byte over here, for an example. Yeah. 
Okay, right. next okay. question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm, this is a good question. One second. How to get the correct position in virtual articulator? Um, uh, okay. uh, correct jaw positions in virtual articulator. Um, yeah, if you have uh, a normal desktop scan in the laboratory, um, the most of the articulator systems, um, they can scan the articulator and then you have the real position. But anyway, if you don't have, um, we have in the articulator uh, research step or in this, um, in this tool, uh, we have re-articulate models virtually. Yeah? And over here, as I have shown it at the beginning, you can um, show and hide the articulator system. You have the occlusal plane. Um, we have also some additional options, um, vertical plane we can show. Um, and so on, and with the manual positioning, um, but it's really manual, you don't have references, you can change and rotate your models, for example, but also um, without um, the, the planes, uh, you have to automatically positioning, and with these three points, for example, over here, you preform the alignment, and then you have the real um, position and the correct position in the articulator system. Yeah, That's the possibility over here to re-articulate the models. Okay, if thank they are you. not scanned correctly, yeah. And also if um, there are some open questions, uh, which one we have not answered, um, this session will be recorded and also these uh, questions uh, we will keep uh, and we'll have your email address and then we will answer later on uh, these questions. So, anything else, Michael? Um, maybe um, again about articulator. Mm -hmm. SIM articulator is not included in uh, the version 2.3 software. I don't think so. That no. not included. No. Sure, it is. Sure, it is. Yes. The, Maybe the, check well, with your reseller. Yes, the uh, SAM uh, articulator is since uh, I don't know 2012. Uh, I've started with Exocat, and uh, I think it was included at the beginning. Yeah, uh, and it's still included. Um, the the list is still growing. Yeah, as you can see over here, um, there are all the articulator systems inside, and uh, but the um, Artex and uh, SAM was uh, at the beginning definitely included. Yeah. Maybe another question. Yep. How can we do canine guidance? Okay, um, this is a little bit more for, um, yeah, also for bite splints, um, but anyway, also over here, um, what we have is, okay, we have different ways. Um, once is here, we can choose which uh, teeth are influenced the articulator movements. Um, this one I will show also on top. Um, and here you can, um, for an example, you can mark uh, or uh, mark some teeth or paint um, some areas. Um, or by scan, um, you can use the pre-op scan, apply. Um, and um, here you can also, um, okay, we have to, ah, yeah, okay, this is my message. Um, I have an intersection because I have used uh, this uh, um, correct antagonist. As you can see, I can open the articulator system or also can um, move the upper and lower jaw along set axis. This one I will use. Um, so, and here, um, as you can see, I have chosen um, pre-op scan. That's one uh, thing I can apply. And then software is using also the um, pre-op scan um, as a reference. But more important is here um, that you can mark pre-op one. I will um, I will hide. So I can mark by clicking the teeth 
um, or I can also uh, set completely or reset or mark regions. Um, and these TIFFs um, will be influenced articulating um, and guidance also over here. Yeah? And uh, during the um, adaptation also, um, you can always mark regions which one are excluded for the adaptation um, that you have more contact. And um, also, um, I will cancel this one. Okay, this one is not shown anymore, but in this window here on top, uh, maybe if I'm open this one. Um, no, it's not shown anymore. Um, I'm done with my um, design, um, but here in the show and height uh, over here on the right side, you have always the movements and you have the show um, distances and then you can do the movement and you can really control with um, add and remove material uh, where you have contact and you can control your guidance. So, something else? Uh, one minute to go. Thank you. Oh, no. Can we use a face scan to align Joe's in virtual articulator? I don't I don't know what you mean exactly, but you can always um, import also um, face scans, yes. Um, and then you align and you align also the, the jaw scans to the face scan and um, that's it. Yeah, and then you have also the, the face scans included or the face scan, yeah. Yes, you can do it, uh, but uh, in my opinion, it makes not so much sense um, because uh, this method is not as accurate as um, normal Facebook or uh, yeah, better yeah, digital yeah, Facebook. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that's only like a visualization. The face scan is only to see um, the whole uh, face and also the lips. And if you turn your head, uh, that you can see how it looks like from the side. Um, but it's a visualization. Um, if you would like to really to use the, the jaw relation, you have to use a face ball or a measurement device to really to work in a perfect way. Exactly. Thank you very yeah. much and thanks uh, for attendance for all. Yes, thank you. I hope you enjoy your the session um, and I will repeat it again. We will have a lot of um, more webinars um, the next few days. Uh, today it was more a little bit like a beginner um, and um, some expert parts. Um, yeah, stay tuned and uh, we will show a lot of more. And don't forget, your freedom is our passion. Bye-bye. <laughs>